Hello YouTube, this is Russian Torts here, and today's video comes at the request of a subscriber who wanted to do uh, to do who wanted to know um, what everything is they need for um, keeping a Russian tortoise. So all the kind of supplies that you need when you first start off keeping a Russian tortoise. And I decided to throw and I'm gonna throw in how much all that would cost you because that's probably a question that people are interested in as well. So I've kind of lined up here what I think you need when you start off on a tortoise. So we obviously on the right here have we light. We have uh, on the right here we have the lights. Um, we got the calcium and vitamin supplements, water conditioner, food, hiding places, water and food dish, and uh, carrier. Now I'm going to go over all of these in detail. I'm also missing um, over here the substrate. It's just I didn't want to lug these huge bags out here because I feel I felt like. It's just going to make my room messy and you guys can deal with a little bit of a changing camera angle here. So, to start off with the lights. So, what you actually need is you need a, a heat light, you need a UVB light, and you need fixtures to put those lights into. Um, you can't use regular, you know, desk lamps, for example, because they're not um, set up for the kind of uh, wattage that gets put out by the heat lamps. So, you need at least one um, specialty fixture for the heat lamp. And they're just with the clamps a lot easier to kind of put a, a, on your cage. So, if we look in Patilla's cage, we got the heat lamp over here. It's a large fixture with, I think, right now I have a 75 watt bulb in there. And then on the right side here, we got a UVB fixture and we got a tube UVB bulb right there. Um, with the heat light, you want to make sure the basking spot gets around 30 degrees Celsius. And um, usually you want to have the UVB bulb on the basking spot as well and I'll notice mine's on the opposite side of the cage that's because it's a little bit difficult if we look at my cage stuff to mount another bulb right there so that's why I included the tube light because the tube light actually goes all the way over here to the basking spot so it's a little bit more um, more UVB output for the tortoise now those two things you definitely need they're not optional tortoises Russian tortoise especially need their heat reptiles are cold-blooded animals and they need UVB um, rays to process the calcium in their body. So the vitamin D3 that comes from the UVB, uh, no, sorry, the vitamin D3 that somehow, I don't know how it exactly works, but comes from the UVB rays is needed to process calcium so that they have strong bone growth. Um, next up, so we went over the heating and lighting stuff, um, all the supplements you need. So you need calcium powder, right here. Um, calcium powder, it's pretty self-explanatory. You can either use calcium powder, you can also buy cuddle bones, it doesn't really matter. Patilla doesn't eat cuddle bones, I've tried it, so I need to stick with calcium powder. You just dust it on their uh, food dish. I often get asked how many times should I um, dust calcium and really it's, I don't have an exact science to it, I just do it whenever I think it's necessary. It usually ends up being like three times a week. Now, multivitamin powder, um, this container is like still the very first container of it I bought and it's fairly, or second container maybe, and it's still fairly full. Um, that's because you don't need to use a lot of multivitamin powder. I usually just use it once a month because overdoing vitamins is actually much more harmful than underdoing vitamins. So it's safer bet to only use a little bit of it. Um, next, you of course need water conditioner. So tap water, especially in my city, is awful and so much chlorine and chloramine in it. You want to have um, conditioner for the water so that it's safe for your tortoise. Then now, I guess sticking with food supplements, we'll come to food. Um, this right here is kind of a specialty tortoise food. You don't necessarily need to buy that, but your tortoise certainly needs some sort of food. So if you don't have access to a good specialty food for tortoises, you can buy um, dark leafy greens from the pet, uh, not pet store, from the grocery store, such as collard greens, um, mustard greens, dandelion. Um, you can also grow your own things like clover, dandelion, great broadleaf plantain in your own backyard in the summer. And um, it's not that expensive food for tortoises. I spend about uh, six bucks a week on greens from the grocery store, and then I supplement it with this stuff. So food's not expensive, but the cost obviously does add up. Um, now hiding spots, we're going to go back to Patilla's cage. As you can see, Patilla has three hiding spots. 
Oh, no, she used to have three hiding spots. I forgot I put a plant here. So Potato has two hiding spots. Um, one all the way on the opposite side of the heat lamp here and one in the little bit warmer corner. She usually goes into this hiding spot over there, the cork bark. Um, hiding spots, of course, are important so that the tortoise doesn't freak out, that it has somewhere to retreat to when it's stressed. You shouldn't really uh, ever drag your tortoise out of a hiding spot. When they're in a hiding spot, they're there because they do not want to interact with you. So you should let them do their own thing. Um, next, right, water and food dishes. So that's actually Patilla's food dish. She hasn't eaten in about a week. I'm not really worried. I'm just letting her do her thing. She's a little bit inactive right now, so I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, but you need a water and a food dish. You can buy water and food dishes from the pet store. However, much cheaper solution to buy um, a water dish in the form of a terracotta, terracotta, cotter terra whatever um, from the home hardware or Home Depot or your local hardware store those are just the ones that came to mind living in Canada um, you'll save more money they're bigger they're more practical they're easier to clean so really it's a win-win-win situation you can't there's no losing aspect to it um, and the last thing that we have here is a little carrier this is a small animal carrier I just got it at the pet store in Germany a long time ago. Still has a sticker on it from when we flew um, when we flew Patilla from Germany to Canada, which was nine years ago. Um, so you need a carrier for when you're traveling and when you're taking your tortoise to the vet. It's um, you can also get a, yourself a cardboard box. I just find it's nice that I have a carrier for her, so I don't need to worry about finding a cardboard box when I want to go to the um, vet. Now your next thing is decorations, so that's kind of why I have the piece of slate here. Um, it's slate, pieces of rock, so in the cage you have like all these rocks in there, piece of wood, plants. Um, decorations are important so that first of all your tortoise doesn't get bored out of its mind with just a flat cage, but also so that on the rock they can grind down their nails and it's just a more interactive and habitat, more interactive habitat for the tortoise. So the plants in here, I have three spider plants. She can actually eat those. She can nibble on them, um, which if you look at the leaves here, she does quite a lot. Um, it's just a more natural setup for the pet. Now, next thing, substrate. Obviously, you need to have some sort of substrate, and that's going to slowly dwindle as you take out poop because you're never able to just take out little pieces of poop out of the cage. You're always going to end up taking some substrate. So I use um, cypress mulch, there are many other options, uh, there's cypress mulch, you can use cocoa fiber, you can use sand, it's really up to you but it's a cost that you need to consider when you um, get your tortoise. And then last thing which is probably the most important thing is the actual cage. So I'm going to back up, climb on my bed so we can back up and see the cage here. So as you can see this is Patel's cage. It's fairly large, it's four feet by four feet. It should be about double the size, but it doesn't fit into my room, which I think you can kind of guess by the fact that I had to climb onto my bed to show it. Um, cages can really range in size and cost. This cage cost me $100 Canadian to build myself, and I have zero experience building cages, which is kind of showing by the fact that, you know, when I screwed these two walls together, I just I didn't. I could have put another piece of wood right in here and made my job a lot easier on myself. But um, really, you don't need any experience, any experience to build your own cage. It was a lot of fun. It was a good learning experience, and it was a lot cheaper. So this cost me about a hundred dollars. Whereas if you buy yourself a large glass aquarium, such as this aquarium down here. Um, that's probably going to run you 200 to 300 dollars depending on where you live, depending on what condition the cage is in. You then need to um, carry this heavy glass terrarium up a flight of stairs or wherever you want to put it. It's a lot easier to buy pieces of wood and assemble a cage yourself. So in the end I um, made myself a list and I kind of calculated how much everything would cost. If we go down the list here, this is all in Canadian and um, prices are not 100% accurate is my guess. I also included the price of a tortoise in there because obviously you need to buy yourself a tortoise. So um, if you want to go the cheap option which is building your own cage and not including any decorations in the cage, 
together with a tortoise, it's going to run you about $680, so $700. Without a tortoise, if we go over here, about $400. So that's the cost for the cage and everything that we talked about when you build the cage yourself. Now, if we go the expensive route, which really is buying yourself a glass cage and putting in decorations, we're looking at about $900 with a tortoise or $600 without the tortoise. So, as you can see, that's a lot of money and something to keep in mind when you're buying your tortoise um, that there's those costs. This doesn't consider the running costs which is veterinary costs, food costs, hydro costs and um, that's a lot of money too. So right now Patilla costs me monthly probably about seventy dollars with uh, electricity and food. So that's something that you need to consider as well when you're um, thinking about getting yourself a tortoise as your first pet. So, that's this video. I want to say thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions for my next um, monthly update video coming up, I'm always going to have a question, a Q&A section in those videos. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, um, thank you for watching, um, and I'll see you guys next time.